Some ideas are ridiculous, and that's perfectly reasonable. In fact, ridiculing ideas is what makes progress. So if I offend some of you, I don't mean to offend you personally. I may offend some of your ideas, but I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. Just as if, just in fact, if you confront my ideas, um, it will lead to a discussion. I'm an educator. It's, you know, a flaw, but it is what it is. That means I believe in actually trying to illuminate ideas and lead to discussion, critical thinking, and eventually learning things and increasing knowledge. Debates aren't meant for that. Debates are rhetorical devices for people to go out and perform, make, the, make statements, and then challenge others and try and uh, 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 convince an audience of something. That's not education. This idea of deductive arguments, um, which, which sounds good, is not the way we learn about reality. Okay? Deductive arguments just don't work. They lead to irrational actions. In fact, if we just ask what common sense is, what common sense is, is taking your beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality so that you will make rational actions. If you force, re if you force your reality to conform to your beliefs, you will make irrational actions. Arguing that something doesn't make sense to you is based on the fact that you, uh, the assumption that you know what's sensible in advance. But we don't know what's sensible in advance until we explore the world around us. Our common sense derived from the fact that we evolved on the savanna in Africa to avoid lions, not to understand quantum mechanics. Our deductions might suggest that you cannot be in two places at once. That is crazy. But of course, an electron not only can be, but it is. We, it doesn't make sense because we didn't evolve to know about it. We've learned about it. We force our idea of common sense to change. It's called learning. Some people would rather read an ancient book than learn, and with this has been a very good evidence of that. To say something is inconceivable just means you can't conceive it. But the great thing about the universe, and the reason that I do science, is that the universe has a much greater imagination than we do. In fact, there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, and that's what's wonderful about the universe. Things that are inconceivable happen all the time. And what, we, what that does is that expands our mind. And expanding our minds to conform to the evidence of reality is common sense. What's amazing to me is you quoted Aristotle as the basis of science. Of course, Aristotle was the one that told us objects fall in proportion to their weight because he actually didn't do the experiment. He deduced it based on what he wanted. Galileo, of course, did the experiment. Aristotle also claimed that infinity was impossible because indeed, as you pointed out, the distance from you to me could be divided into a half and then a quarter, and then an eighth, and then a sixteenth, and that's an infinite thing, it makes it impossible. Yes. Well, the thing that Aristotle didn't know how to do, and you don't know how to do, is to sum an infinite series. One plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth adds up to two. Yes. Okay, so that kind of argument that infinity is impossible, it just doesn't make sense mathematically. Infinities do occur. Now, it is true in my book that I said infinite density or infinite energy is a, is a, is a concept that appears to be in, in contradiction with the evidence of, of physics. But that doesn't apply all inf infinities are impossible. In fact, space could be infinitely large. There's no, there's no presumption that space isn't infinitely large. It could be. What we now know about physics suggests it probably isn't, but there's no law of physics that says space can't be infinitely large. So this notion that you deduce that infinity is impossible because you don't like it is just not the way the world works. Because infinities happen all the time whether you like them or not. Not only that, it doesn't lead to irrational, uh, to irrational actions. Mathematicians have a way of dealing with infinity. Yes. We can add infinities. We can, we can take numbers and an infinite series. That, For example, the series 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 to infinity actually has, in mathematical terms, can have a finite uh, sum. It's minus 112, if you wanted to know. Okay? It may not seem logical to you. It may seem inconceivable to you that the sum of a series of positive terms, each of which is bigger than 112, could end up being minus 112, but the fact that it's inconceivable to you just means you're ignorant. Why should I believe Muhammad's revelations any more than anyone else's? In fact, there's a young woman in the United States in my country who, as you know, had a revelation. You may know this. She had a revelation. God told her to drown her four children in a bathtub, and she did, because God told her. She heard it. She heard it. She had a revelation. It was real. She heard words of incredible harmony and beauty that she'd never experienced before in her life, and she drowned her four children. Okay, now she's in a mental hospital for good reason. Because there's no evidence 
There's no that a sensible person would believe to suggest that God was telling her to drown the four children. It's homosexually wrong. In the Islamic tradition, it's a sin. Okay, now here's, a, here's an idea of why common sense should tell you that Islam, like many other religions, is not common sense. Because, of course, homosexuality is perfectly natural. In all, in all animal species, almost, it's natural. It occurs with a 10% frequency. Okay? In fact, there are good evolutionary reasons for homosexuality. So in that sense, there's no reason and a fundamental... Why would a god who thought it was a sin make it natural among all species? I don't think the sheep, by the way, which 10% of sheep are long-term homosexual relationships. Okay? <laughs> why would a god who thought it was a sin create sheep who aren't able to think about it, be homosexual. That's the kind of nonsense that we have to ask. And the only way we can determine if it's nonsense is by looking at the world around us, not by deducing it, not by listening to the words of ignorant individuals and Iron Age, Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the sun. Wisdom and learning comes from observing the world around us. And we shouldn't take our wisdom from people who didn't even understand the way the world worked. I get so tired of hearing people talk about tolerance, but then I hear people talking about blasphemers. I should be allowed to blaspheme all I want because ridicule is an important part of, of, of inquiry and discussion. Sometimes ridicule some, ridiculing something illuminates it. And I hear about blasphemers, I hear, I hate to say it, and this may be a complete misapplication of Islam. It could be that Islam, as it's practiced in many countries in the world, is a misapplication of Islam. But all I can see is intolerance when I see those principles applied. Intolerance to blasphemers, intolerance to homosexuals, intolerance in general. If we ask what's sensible, why would we think that this unproven God that is supposed to be the basis of not just Islam, but all religions, different gods, different characteristics, but the Islamic God, much like the Judeo-Christian God, is a real creep. This is a God worse than Saddam Hussein. Instead of tor torturing you just for your life, tortures you for infinity, forgive me the word, but eternity, let me use that word, eternity for not believing. For not believing, you're tortured for infinity. The tortures are actually described in the Koran, and you know it as well as I do. And the point is, if you just ask yourself common sense, if you were a divine being, say you had an ant colony that you made in your house, would you be offended if those ants didn't pay homage to you five, to, well, let's start with 50 times a day before Muhammad cut it down to 30 and then five. Would you be offended if those ants didn't pay homage to you five times a day? And if they didn't, if they didn't look up to you or didn't recognize your existence, would you destroy them? No, I mean, it just seems so petty. So why should we believe in a hateful, unmerciful, petty, sadomasochistic, homophobic, sexist God? It's just irrational. It's not sensible. I had a debate recently with somebody who said, it's impossible for non-life to turn into life. Well, that's a nice statement. It's a nice belief. And it's a belief you can have, but it's a belief that can be wrong. And that's the great thing about science. It's you're willing to change your beliefs. You're not assuming the answers before you ask the question. You're not assuming you know what's divinely right just because you interpret a certain book to mean a certain thing and someone else may interpret it to mean something else. You will agree there are different interpretations of every book, including the Bible and the Koran. And so you, to presume that you know divine truth before you've asked the universe is not sensible. I'm trying to show you there's other roots to knowledge, sir. Which That's is, not such is, so testimony, for example, oh, authentic testimony. and valid testimony. Oh my goodness, do you really believe in testimony as proof of, uh, of do you really believe that? But, but Professor Krauss, the do whole... Really, just, do you really believe that let, I say... Let's not dig a hole for ourselves. Someone did something, it happened? Go to the Berkeley website on the scientific method. It says, one of the majority I don't aspects... go to websites, I just do science. Yeah, okay, well, it's very, it's very great. Well, do this science then, listen to this science. The Berkeley website says, the key part of the scientific method is, is also the workings of other scientists. that you, you test and you don't trust. Yeah. And you repeat their experiments because you don't trust them. Yes, I agree. That's wait, the way wait, wait. Works. But there's a lot of science. You don't trust other people's results. Excuse me, sir. There's a lot of science that requires testimony, yeah? What? Lots of science. What? Okay, I'll give you an example. Have you done every single experiment concerning evolution? No. So you believe it's true? Thank no, you very no, much. I don't know. What else do you want to say? Do you want to do what?
you want me to answer? You want me to answer? Yeah. You want me to answer a question? Of course I do. Of course I do. You, you, you get an answer before I even answered it. Come oh, on. Okay. <coughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I learning, I'm learning from anything. the best. I told you, <laughs> I don't believe in anything. I think, based on the evidence of my experience, yes, and everything I see in the world around me, that evolution is highly likely. Okay. And that's what I would call a fact. So, we, so, so, so when you had an interview... I'm, I'm, I'm believably highly likely. I'm glad we had more dialogue than... I mean, as I once said, because I, I just think the debate format is a stupid format. I'm, for, forgive me. Uh, it, it, it just doesn't lead to the kind of interaction. Actually, there's been some positives that have come out of the fact when Hamza and I have talked that have been much more positive than when people make these rhetorical long yeah. statements and trying to find mm -hmm. things and try and sneak the other person into some logical contradiction. It's just, it's just not good for, for education. My intent, and I'm sure I've offended people here, my intent was not to offend. I always offend, and I offend some of my scientific colleagues too. My intent was just to raise questions and encourage people to think about issues. And for that, I hope, I've, I hope to, that some of the statements I've made will cause people to think. And, you're, and indeed, my whole point is that given access to information, and I believe you should get access to information about the world really works, which is why I write scientific books and I speak, because I think these are some of those beautiful ideas people have ever come up with, that we shouldn't be afraid of them, we shouldn't fear them, we shouldn't view them as if, in fact, if they offend our beliefs, that's a good thing, because it means our beliefs are wrong. And that as I say to students all the time, is the greatest gift we can have. Changing our minds and learning is what's produced the progress that allows this room to happen, that allows these video cameras to be recording things. So I just hope that as I hope I am willing to change my beliefs or change my mind in the presence of evidence and get information, that I hope that some of the things I've said have spurred your thinking and I certainly don't want to convert you into anything and so, thank you for listening. Mm -hmm.